Um, my topic today is actually um, governance and DAOs in IOTA. And uh, I actually wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of, over our journey that we had um, that we have gone gone through over the last uh, nearly two and a half years now. Um, shortly to me, I'm uh, Philo or Holger. I'm community manager at the IOTA Foundation. I am actually coming from Germany, coming from a chemical engineering background, but um, have done a lot of other things since then. And I'm since 2018 in the project as a community member, been pretty active everywhere in all kind of um, initiatives to make um, IOTA more approachable and more easy accessible for non-developers because I'm coming from an, I'm not a computer scientist, I can't code. So that was always my thing to make IOTA available and accessible for many other peoples. Um, I got employed basically with a special focus on governance and DAOs. And um, this is where I'm spending a lot of my time within. I'm working together with Antonio and with Mark in the ecosystem team. I'm every day, whole day in Discord, um, hosting events and doing all kinds of stuff um, and especially helping DAOs and anybody that is interested in governance to um, get things going to get to with IOTA. Um, maybe I keep this short. Um, governance and DLTs is a is a pretty complex topic, is a huge rabbit hole. Um, you can approach it from many, many different sides. Yeah, you have a basic protocol governance that is, is also kind of part of a consensus, like you have it in Bitcoin. You have all kind of crazy ideas around DAOs and the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, for me, it is really important that we for IOTA define and find our approach to governance um, because it's, in my opinion, a very important part of the whole process of decentralization. And I think decentralization is a, is a critical topic for IOTA. It is our core thing which we are trying to solve technically since many years. Um, but besides the technical and protocol governance, there are much more um, sides of governance that need to be solved to really um, be able to call us as a real decentralized um, system in a decentralized DLT. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff happening in governance. So um, the good thing in governance is, or in DLTs is if you don't agree with my protocol, just fork it and do it yourself. Yeah, this is one of the core principles. Yeah, so this is one of the cool things in, in, in DLTs. We are open source. If you don't like how we do IOTA, fork it and do it yourself. If you don't like Ethereum, do Ethereum Classic like Bitcoin, just fork it and do your own version of it. This is one approach to governance. It is an open system. Everybody can go in and out and can uh, use and change it as they like. That's a really nice feature, actually, in my, in my opinion. Um, it all comes basically down to control. Yeah? Who is able to control a system? Who is able to change a system or a protocol um, on especially on the code side, this is usually um, bound and a little bit permissioned through core teams, foundations, core devs that have the ability to update code. Uh, but like I said, it's a big nuanced field around this whole governance topic and um, community work and community involvement in governance is one of our very important topics that we are trying to uh, focus much more on. Yeah, it, we want to make the whole system much more open. Not everything should always rely on the IOTA Foundation, and also the community should not always only look up to the IOTA Foundation to basically do everything. Yeah, we want to enable our community members and our ecosystem to participate in the protocol and participate in the network and make their own decisions, go their own paths. And um, we as a IOTA Foundation really take care about the core protocol development, about research, but the ecosystem and the growth and the community and everything around that should be moved over into the hands of the community and the ecosystem participants. 
a big import. Um, am I actually still alive? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so governance aims to distribute power um, away from the core teams or from the founders or for the initial um, implementers of the protocol into the ecosystem. I think this is where we can keep it. Um, you have different uh, different sectors in governance, yeah. So um, and they all have to work together. You need uh, processes and tools. This is basically um, these are technical features that allow governance, like voting systems, like um, counting systems, like decentralized on-chain um, ways for a community or for token holders or stakeholders or voters to participate in governance. You need a structure. You need basically a set of rules. And so governance comes in the end. It's like creating a little, a little nation state. Um, and this is where we are currently very strongly working on in defining the rules, defining basically, if you want to say it, the laws um, of how participation in governance for IOTA will work. And luckily, we have the Shimmer Network where we can experiment with all these things. And of course, what governance doesn't work without engagement of the community and, and members um, that are interested in it and that like to participate in this whole thing. Yeah? And the good thing is that we have a very engaged um, group of people and in, in the community that is um, strongly engaging in governance um, on a weekly basis, basically. And um, I'd like to basically give a little bit of an introduction how we came to this whole thing. Um, this is maybe also an interesting thing. Decentralization is is a process. It's not something like a, it's not like the coordinator that you can switch on and off. Yeah, the coordinator switch on and off is just one part of decentralization. And this is of course the technical side of it, but the, the structures and the processes around that um, usually should be decentralized in a in a staged process. Yeah, because you always have to make decisions how how far you want to go in decentralization and how much you can afford to kill speed and efficiency of development in the protocol. Yeah? And so um, usually in all DLTs, we see this as a stage process that starts with some small steps and leads to, in the end, a very broad governance approach where most of the features of a protocol can be controlled by governance decisions. Yeah, so that's the question. Um, how much governance do we want? Yeah, how decentralized do we want our de decision making? And how much efficiency and speed are we willing to, let's say, sacrifice in the in in this um, process and in this phase of the protocol where we are currently? Um, so it's a difficult topic, and there's a lot a lot to talk and to think about which direction you want to go with the things. DAOs. Um, this this fall, and then I go I go over to the next topic because it's just such a big topic. And if I would have, would have more time, and would have maybe uh, talked a little bit more about this. Some I think these are the the most important features. Yeah. So DAOs are are global communities. Um, they should be permissionless and they should be open and transparent for everyone. Yeah. So if you want to become a member of a DAO, um, there shouldn't be much gatekeeping going on. Wherever you are in the world, whoever you are, um, your identity, your race, your sex, nothing of this matters. The only thing that should matter is what are you able to bring into the community? How can you participate and how can you contribute to the protocol, to the community, and to the purposes and values of a DAO. Um, and it's always up to you. Yeah. So you don't sign the contract. You don't have really um, tasks to do every day. It should be fluid. So you can go in and out and you can do as much or as less as you want in a DAO. 
And those are, of course, or have been the, the next big thing, especially 2017, 2018, 2019. The, the boom of DeFi has also been a boom of DAOs. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot of hype going on in the space around it. Um, luckily, um, we in IOTA have also jumped on the train and we have started to develop a, a thriving uh, governance and DAO ecosystem. Still small, but it's growing. Um, so I'll skip those things. Um, maybe this is a nice statement. Yeah, so DAOs are not products. They are frameworks for decision-making about products and projects. Yeah, and if your DAO is successful, you shouldn't even know it's there. It'll just be a just well-functioning community. This is our approach, my also personal approach, um, how I see it and how I also see uh, the work with our IOTA community, with our community members. Um, I see us already as a DAO, not very well structured and functioning and really in the beginning, but um, we are continuously moving in this direction to enable our community and our ecosystem to participate in all aspects of the protocol. Yeah? And um, there is a lot of work to do still. What I actually wanted to talk about a little bit more is um, how we came to where we are in the moment and um, how our journey um, to approach governance and to enable DAOs in, in IOTA actually what happened there. And um, because this is also kind of my personal journey in, in the IOTA Foundation, um, everything basically started with the Chrysalis upgrade in, in April, end of April, 2021, yeah? where you might remember there was this blog post about these unclaimed iota tokens and uh, basically the first mention of okay these tokens should go to the community they belong to the community and the community should set up a DAO and uh, to steward and manage what should happen with those tokens and i think everybody that was in the community at this time um, it was kind of a crazy time uh, it was a very surprising move that um, and i was there at that time still just a community member like all of you. And um, what happened is that we started to discuss this whole topic. Basically, okay, there are now tokens. They are worth a lot of money and they belong to us. Um, what should we do with them? Yeah. And so there has been a, f a really, really interesting discussion of a lot of community members. I don't know, maybe a couple of hundred people that daily um, discussed all these topics in our Discord. And so we started basically to form a group of of people that wanted to, to tackle this whole um, situation and this whole kind of problem and, and figure out what we do with this. And so we um, figured quickly out that Discord is not the perfect medium for this. So we, we opened the GitHub forum. And uh, in June 21, we did our first community governance call in uh, the IOTA Discord. And uh, there was Dom, there was Antonio, there was a lot of people from the IOTA Foundation, and I don't know, a couple of hundred people from the IOTA community. And we all basically came together and, and started to talk in, in the Discord, in the voice chat about what we are going to do. And we made a couple of decisions and um, a group of people took this in their hand and I was luckily one of them. And um, we really start to work on, okay, how do we create a DAO in IOTA? We don't have smart contracts. We don't have a voting system. We have nothing there to, to come to decisions. And so over the whole summer of 2021, uh, we worked on all these systems. Yeah? We started to work together with the Firefly team to develop an on-chain uh, voting system. We made a lot of decisions um, in our weekly community calls. We started them and we did since then every week, every Thursday, uh, we have a public call in the IOTA Discord where everybody is invited to participate in uh, those discussions and to make decisions and to bring in um, comments and whatever. And so we made a lot of decisions along this way. Uh, what quorum should we vote, use for voting? Um, what majority do we use? How is the voting system going to happen? How is the counting going to happen? So it was a really thriving time um, working together with the Firefly team, with the Hornet team, with the UI and UX designers of the IOTA Foundation. And also during this time, I think basically in uh, end of July, I joined the IOTA Foundation because it was clear that there 
needs it it wouldn't be possible to all manage this in just in the free time of community members and so basically the foundation employed me and said okay um we're gonna pay you um you take care full time about all without topics and um, i basically moved in what happened towards the end of the year was that we saw a huge interest in the iota community about this whole topic not just about the tokens but also about um general DAOs and we created the, the first um, DAO Pioneer Learning Circle, which um, was a great success. We actually had, uh, I written it down here, 486 IOTA community members that participated in the DAO Pioneer session. Uh, this was a, a five weeks uh, learning course that Antonio and myself did. And we did every day two meetings in IOTA Discord with this group. Um, so that we could also catch all time zones. And uh, so we did 51 live sessions, um, community meetings where we talked about DAOs, governance principles. We had extensive materials for the participants to work through. And um, it was a great success. Uh, and from this DAO pioneer, we had an, the first offspring of the first DAOs that um, have been created in our community. Mainly the, um, those are that you still might know, they are still active in the community now is the content creator DAOs. Sooniverse kind of was an offspring of this whole initiative because they thought about, hey, we need some tools for DAOs. We need a platform where you can do this. We have the Deepa Pirate Party, the Fence Together. We have Ape DAO and Shimacy. Um, All this was basically an, uh, coming out of this DAO pioneer time. Um, and okay, I just saw that I can extend <laughs> my my speak a little bit. Um, also, if you have some some questions, I'm not really able to follow the chat, but I'll switch over from time to time. So if there are some questions in the audience, just um, post them in the chat. Yeah. 2022 um, was an amazing year for us we're basically we when i say we i mostly talk about the governance group yeah this is really a group of i'd say 25 to 30 people that um every week join our community call that really participate in in designing all the systems and the frameworks that we have built and that really they're really passionate about governance and they really contribute with a lot of their free time and my first thing is really i have to thank all of those people because i know they're not getting paid like me and they do this in their free time and still they have been mostly able to join all the calls um, help me in in this endeavor to create governance systems and DAO systems in our community and so again without the contribution of these community members nothing would have worked and uh, nothing should have worked because it's not a single man approach i'm just basically administrating things and enabling the community um, to participate in this in this really interesting topic so what did we do in 22 we started the iota governance forum um, which we, since then, uh, this was the old research forum, um, and we said, okay, but we need a place basically where we can specifically um, propose ideas to the community, have focused discussions and also longer discussions on topics. And the forum is a great idea and a great uh, tool for this. Um, in April 22, with the nearing of the Shimmer release, we had the first, let's say, community-driven proposal around governance. Um, Copy, which most of you might know from Nakama Labs and Deeper now, um, came up with that to um, create an ecosystem fund for the Shimmer network. And so to add another 20% of token supply, um, to the supply that was created from the staking to have some tokens at hand that we can use to um, uh, basically to support the ecosystem. Yeah? And so the idea was to have 10% of these tokens going to the community and the other 10% going 
to the Tangle Ecosystem Association or the IOTA Foundation. And the proposal started in April 22. Uh, end of May, we finally managed to get our, um, our first vote going on. Um, and this is basically the vote about the, the start of the whole journey. Yeah? So it took us from April 21 until May 22 to be able to really make this decision about the unclaimed IOTA tokens and if the community wanted to do something with these tokens, which was the option built, or if the community wanted to uh, not use the token at all and basically burn them. Yeah? And uh, in my opinion, very luckily, the community decided with a huge majority of, I think, I don't know, 68% of voters. Um, that uh, the community should take ownership over these tokens and use them in a DAO to support the IOTA ecosystem. So this decision was made in end of May 2022. And we're still waiting on it because uh, for stewarding these tokens, we will need, um, we will need smart contracts on, on IOTA. Um, okay. So as I'm nearing 10 o'clock, I'm just shortly in the chat. Um, now, what else? We had um, the vote in July about the Shimmer 20% ecosystem fund. And since then, actually, the governance group is working on um, building the voting system for Shimmer, for the Firefly wallet in Shimmer. Um, then we, one of the biggest achievement, in my opinion, was that we created the Shimmer governance framework, which is a quite huge uh, set of rules quite extensive document which we had i don't know spent how many hundreds of hours working on this document which is the the basic rule set for all decision making processes in the shimmer network and this was created in all our governance meetings together with the community in very very long and intense discussions um, and it's basically the yeah the the foundational law that we use to make all decisions um, in community governance in the Shimmer uh, network, and uh, you can find this document in our wiki, and um, then um, what else did we had? We started in end of the year 2022 to look out for uh, people that would um, form the Shimmer Community Grant Committee. Um, the applications have been open and we had, I think, 26 different community members applying for the position of grand reviewer in this committee. Um, and moving through towards 2023, in uh, end of January, um, we basically moved this four big decisions that we had to do for the Shimmer Network, which would have been to set up the Shimmer Community Grant Committee, to decide who should lead the Community Grant Committee as a full-time paid position and paid by the community, and who should be the grant reviewers, um, the four other members of the committee that would um, work on reviewing grants and stewarding the budget that the community has given them to pay out grants. And the last was the decision to form the Shimmer Growth Committee, where basically um, members of the community and also members of the IOTA Foundation um, steward a budget of community tokens to use it especially to grow and for growth and marketing related activities in the Shimmer network. And uh, towards March 2023, we were finally ready to do these votes. Luckily, all of them have been accepted with a huge majority. I think we had 96% um, in favor of um, all those proposals. And luckily, in, since 1st of May, we have the first real results of all these governance work that took two years. So we have an operating 
community treasury. We have an operating growth committee. And um, basically, the community has taken over ownership over their own purpose. They have taken ownership over their tokens. They're using those tokens to do their own decisions in supporting and funding the ecosystem. And I'm really proud of how all this turned out. I'm really happy about the, com uh, the selected community members, about the decisions the community took. And I'm really happy to see this now um, giving out grants to projects, yeah, supporting our ecosystem in an in a easier and quicker way than we as the IOTA Foundation have ever been able to do that. Yeah, and this is, in my opinion, a huge success for the IOTA community, for the whole ecosystem that we have been able to pull this whole thing up out of nothing. It took us two years, now able to give the community control over their own purpose and over their own fundings. Um, okay, so maybe if there are some questions or anything, I can continue talking about this topic another couple of hours. It's like an endless thing and there's a lot of things to do, but I don't want to take off the speaking time of others. So maybe um, if there are questions in the community, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, I think that's a nice um, introduction to the Q&A session for, the, uh, for this talk right now. Thanks, of course, for uh, your presentation, Philo, even though uh, we have some, we had some technical issues, right? Um, mm -hmm. Definitely very interesting. And I've got a couple of questions for you, maybe two that we can cover before we will transition to the panel talk. Um, so the first one is, of course, um, are there any DAOs you would recommend um, where you think the barrier of entry is even lower than you just described uh, in your talk or in the your, uh, in, our, in our ecosystem? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a personal, very, very, very big fan of the IOTA content creator DAO because kind of is also, I feel like, I don't know, I was also kind of involved in, in this whole idea. And um, the idea around the IOTA content creator DAO is just great because it is basically a tool for everybody in the community that is somehow skilled or willing to participate in creating some kind of content, information for others, information for our own community, information for other communities, because it's all about making IOTA recognized out in the space. And um, as you have, you maybe all know the IOTA Foundation is very limited through the German foundation laws and what we can do, what we can talk about, what we can promote, if we even can do marketing. And so the, the foundation of the content creator DAO was the first great step for the community doing the things themselves. And it's a very, very easy. It's just basically in Discord. There's no token. You don't need to spend money on anything. You just can go in there and say, hey, I'm... I'm capable, I'm, I can build a website, I'm a graphic designer, I'm very good in writing something, I can produce little videos, and whatever you like to do, um, you will find something to do there. And um, it's evolving into a little business now, they have sp already some little spin-ups and things like this, and I think this was a great success for, uh, for DAOs in our ecosystem, and they have done an amazing job already. So this is really kind of the easiest entry into DAOs in our ecosystem, I think. All right, thank you very much for this one. Uh, we got a question from the chat from Patrick Müller, and he's asking if there will be a separate DAO for IOTA itself. That's a good question. And this is basically what we are currently um, working on and talking about, because this is not a decision that will come from me or from the IOTA Foundation, um, this is again a decision that's going to happen in the community. So we will, we have a DAO now forming for the Shimmer ecosystem and for the grant committee. This will be a legal entity set up in the Marshall Islands, which I'm also very proud about that we have been able to really establish uh, not just a, it's a real world except the DAO, this whole thing can ha will have a bank account, they can sign contracts, and it is still a decentralized autonomous organization organized on the Tangle and on a DLT, and it's not just another company. 
And the question for us is now with the upcoming um, IOTA tokens that will um, be released once we have the Stardust upgrade on IOTA. The question is for the community, okay, do you want to set up a separate DAO that will take care about these IOTA tokens? Or does it make sense to integrate those IOTA tokens in the already existing DAO that takes care about the with the Shimmer Grant Committee. Maybe there can be a separate committee for just the IOTA tokens, but maybe it would make sense to put it under the same entity because otherwise it will, in my opinion, it will just create a lot of um, additional costs um, with no benefit. But this is something that we will discuss in the community governance calls. So every Thursday at 4 p.m., um, you can join our calls in the Discord. They are always recorded. We have a YouTube playlist. I have linked it all in my presentation if you want to look into this. And if you want to participate and um, and take part in these discussions and um, and decisions, just take part in the governance calls. And we're going, li very likely, we're going to uh, put up a vote for this. Yeah. So because this is still also not a decision that should be done in our small, let's say, small governance group. So we will ask basically the IOTA token holders if they want to have this DAO set up or implemented into the Shimmer DAO, so merge them together or set up an independent own DAO just for IOTA. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you just mentioned it. Um, uh, Philo's uh, presentation is just linked as a download uh, on the attendance uh, side of the event mobile UI. So if you want to grab it, uh, go right ahead. And I think we will close this whole um, talk off with the last question from uh, Thomas Ostertag. And he's asking, are the DAOs uh, DAO pioneers on Open uh, Circle, and could we join also the weekly calls on those things as well? Absolutely. So the DAO pioneer was basically um, we did now two of these. Yeah. So the DAO pioneer is kind of a focused learning experience. Yeah. The first one, like I said, we did. It was a five weeks course, and it of course was open for everybody. Uh, the second one we we kept a little bit shorter, and um, I think if time allows it, we're definitely planning to have another one towards autumn of this year. Um, and anything else around governance is really happening in our Discord. We have uh, several channels there. We have a whole governance category. We have the governance discussion channel. We have an, a separate own channel for the community treasury. and. Uh, yeah, our calls are always happening in the general voice chat in the IOTA Discord. So just hop in, um, listen in, ask questions, jump into the chat, um, post your ideas. It's completely open. There are no requirements. The only thing is basically that you are willing to participate. If you have good ideas and you want to bring them in or discuss them, we are always happy for new people joining. And uh, yeah, so it's very, it's a very easy entry. Yeah, This is how it should be. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you very much again for your talk, even though we had the technical issues. Um, it was a very interesting topic and cool. I think we will see us again or hear us again in the Discord. I just joined a couple of uh, those calls and they were also ah, fairly cool. interesting. Nice. Yeah, yeah we, have a, we have a nice group. Yeah, so, and there's a lot of things to do. There's a, a huge load of work ahead of us. Um, it's never going to stop, in my opinion, the whole governance thing. Yeah, so we always have to develop something new and uh, adjust things. So um, yeah, endless, but very fruitful topic. Thank you again. Okay, See thanks you. a, a nice lot, day. everyone. Bye bye.